let's prepare environmental engineering today we are going to see the factors affecting per capita demand so in the last class we have already seen the types of demand and for what the demand has to be noted and today we are going to see the factors affecting this is not very important for preparing the exams but this may be asked as any objective questions which of the factors is uh not affecting the per capita demand like that they will be asking so it is better to be aware of these topics so the first is the size of the city so based on the size the water demand will be varying as it is a greater cities the demand will be more and the next is climatic conditions so in very hotter areas and in very colder areas the water will be used more Uh, because in very colder areas if you are not using the water regularly then freezing will be happening inside the pipes so they regularly or they often open the pipes for regulating the flow of the water and the next is the type of gentry and habits of the people so as the uh, rich people consumes more water and the people who are very uh, poor and the people who live in slum area will be using very less water and the next is industrial and commercial activities as the industries have uh, need more water and they'll be using more water if there is no industries in any area then the water demand will be lesser than and then the quality of water supplies if the quality is good then the water consuming will be more even the industries need very good quality water to be used for their boilers so when the quality of the uh, municipality water itself is good means they won't go for their own water production units they'll be using the available municipal water itself and the next is pressure so when the pressure is more the water consumption also will be more for example if you take a uh, story building high story building uh, if the pressure is more then the water can be reached to all the floors easily so that the water consumption also will be more in the uh, apartments or something and the next is development of sewerage facilities so the sewerage facilities means in some building they'll be provided with the flushing system so the water consumption will be more that if it is using the old conservation type latrine means the water consumption will be lesser there and the next is system of supply so the water may be supplied all 24 hours to any area but in some areas they'll be providing it at peak hours or uh limited time hours only so this also affects the per capita demand and the next is cost of water so as usual if the cost is more then the consumption will be less and the vice versa and the policy of metering and method of charging so here there are two types so the first one is how much water they are consuming based on that the water will be uh, the rate will be given to them okay so it is called as the metering type so how much water they are consume based on that the charge will be given to that people and the second method is there is no metering system and there will be a monthly fixed rate for the users so the first system is only actually beneficial because when we are knowing the consumption rate and that particular or that respective amount to be paid then we'll be aware and so that will be economic in the usage of the water but in the monthly fixed rate we won't be that much cautious in that method and the next is variations in demand so how the water demand varies with the daily hours that is only we are going to see here so this is the water demand and this is the hours from 0 to 24 hours of a day so if you see this from 0 that is at the big night it will be very low because the water consumption will be very low and it will be gradually increasing and then it will be highly increased during the time of 8 to 11 and then it will be gradually decreasing at about 13 that is 1 o'clock 1 pm okay so after that it will be maintained at a constant level and again after 4 pm it is gradually increasing and it is maximum at the time of 7 pm to 9 pm so the 8 o'clock to 11 o'clock in the morning and 7 to 9 in the night the water demand will be more and the water usage will be more and that it gradually decreases so this is how the water demand varies in a particular day so based on the various uh, varying demand in the daily demand and also in the hourly basis these formulas are given to us so the maximum daily demand will be equal to 
1.8 times the average daily demand so the average daily demand can be taken from this graph an average of all these usage okay so the maximum daily demand is 1.8 times the average daily demand the maximum hourly demand is 1.5 times the average hourly demand the maximum hourly demand is equal to 2.7 into average daily demand so these three are very important so these will be asked in the objective type questions for the exams this may be asked in a different type also so how much percentage the average daily demand is equal to the maximum daily demand like that they will be given so for that the answer will be 180 percentage so it is 180 percentage more than this daily uh, average demand and here it is 150 percentage and here it is 270 percentage so like this also the question could be asked so that we can answer it easily and the next is average hourly demand is equal to maximum daily demand by 24 it is for the hour so daily by 24 hours will give your average hourly demand so with this you can calculate the value for the average hourly demand a good rich formula is given so it is p is equal to 180 into t power minus 0.1 so here p is the peak factor so the peak factor means uh, the maximum water is used at what time so based on that hourly demand and that average demand we'll be calculating this peak factor so for calculating this this formula is derived and t is the days how many days we are going to calculate for example if you are taking one day so p will be 180 into 1 it's 180 percentage if you are calculating for 7 days it is 148 percentage if you are calculating for 30 days it is 128 percentage if you see here we are putting t is equal to one day so one day means it is a daily demand so we are getting the peak factor as 180 percentage which we used here also okay so similarly here the weekly demand will be 148 because we have given 7 days 30 days then the 30 days means it's a monthly so the monthly demand will be 128 percentage the average monthly demand so with this formula you can calculate for whatever days you can whatever days you want to do so based on the population a fixed peak factor is given by the goi manual so up to 50000 population we can directly take it as three three value and it is above 50000 to 2 lakh people then it is 2.5 and greater than 2 lakh people it is 2 and for all the rural supply we can take it as three the next is coincident draft so here the total draft is taken as the maximum daily demand plus fire demand because the fire accident may happen at any time we can't judge that if a fire accident is happening at the time of a peak hours that is we tell it as morning uh, 8 to 11 am and evening 7 to 9 am no if the peak hours in that peak hours if the fire accident is happening then there won't be enough water for the supply so we should not take the maximum hourly demand here for calculating the total draft so you should be considering the maximum daily demand plus fire demand will give you a total draft so this is known as the coincident draft so there should not be any coincidence with the fire accident at the peak hours so to manage that we are giving this formula and the next is the design period so the design period is very important for designing any uh, water structures related to the treatment plants or anything because after this time period the structure will be losing its ability to do its functions so for that it's given for dams it is 50 years this is the maximum and for intake works it is 30 pump house it is 30 electric motors 15 water treatment units 15 pipes 30 reservoir 15 and the distribution system it is 